Hi viewers this is J Swami assistant professor of zoology today we are going to discuss in detail the freshwater fish culture under this topic uh, we will discuss in brief the introduction to freshwater fish culture freshwater fishes which are usually cultured in india fish culture and rearing methods nature of the soil and water supply hatchery units management of nursery ponds rearing ponds stocking ponds and the management techniques like pre stock management stocking and post stocking management and the different kinds of systems which are used for the culturing of fishes traditional system extensive system semi intensive system and the intensive system and the culture types basically monoculture polyculture integrated fish culture lake strain culture and cage culture then see the introductory part of the freshwater fish culture usually fishes are extensively used as a food since they contain large quantities of proteins fats and nutrients hence there is a increasing demand for the fish food generally there is a traditional way where we capture the fish from the ponds but due to the increased demand internal and external demand the fish culture is taken up to get an yield of 10000 tons sorry 10 tons per hectare it is increased 10 tons per hectare per year so such a uh, uh, profitable industry the fish culture is now there are the selected fishes which give more yield in the artificial ponds rather than the natural ponds naturally occurring water body water bodies so in the artificial ones what we will do we will regulate the physical conditions chemical conditions and biological conditions of the water biological factors of the water so that it is highly profitable so that uh, many agricultural and the crop lands are converted to fish culture ponds because of the high profit and also we go for the uh, regulation of the nutritional needs and growth and breeding efforts to be made to achieve high productivity similarly uh, it is seen in between fish culture and agriculture in some factors like soil water fertilization and their regulation the rate of commercial fish farming in india is increasing rapidly because the fish and fish products has huge demand in indian market and the consuming rate and demand of fish is increasing gradually in accordance with the current population growth as usually india has a large number of rivers lakes and many natural water resources so there are greater opportunities for setting up new career a business and income source by commercial fish farming in india so why there is a uh, huge demand because they have high nutritious value and the fish which is selected for the culture practice they should contain certain features to make the culture profitable so what are the uh, features to be attained by the fish they should have fast growth rate the fish should have fast growth rate and it has to take less amount of food economy of feeding and if they have to mature early early maturity and they should contain disease resistance and the food of the fish should have high uh, nutritious value and high consumers demand like the morels so and there should be high demand for the export and thereby we, we should take care while we are going for the 
culturing of fish we should take care which kind of species have all these characters then we have to select that and go for the fish culture right there are the uh, many more fishes which are usually cultured in the india generally they are major carps minor carps cat fishes exotic fishes marels so on so the major carps are generally katla katla labio rohita and sirenus brigala so this is the katla katla fish so it may this is the largest carp of the uh, indian waters it grows up to 1 meter in length okay and if you observe the characteristic features of the katla katla it the body is broad and stout mouth is upturned with the prominent lips dorsal side is more convex than the ventral side grayish color on dorsal and silver color on sides and body is covered with the cycloid scales and head do not contain any kind of scales large eyes which are visible from the underside of the head and short anal fin four could caudal fin and here the important feature is 100 grams of katla fish 100 grams of meat of uh, katla fish it consists of 20 grams of protein 2.5 grams of fats 525 mg of calcium 230 mg of phosphorus and 110 kcal of energy along with either vitamins for 100 grams of katla fish so the same features are observed here the body is large and stout and here the eyes are very prominent lips are prominent upturned and anal fin is small okay forked caudal fin and body covered by the scales okay dorsal surface is highly convex rather than the ventral surface okay so body is covered by scales but not the head region so that these are the uh, basic biological features of the katla katla fish which is usually grown in the indian fresh waters then second uh, major carp is the labio rohita commonly called as the uh, rohu here the biological features are it grows up to 90 cm elongated body moderately round abdomen head is prominent uh, head has a prominent snout lips are thick and fringed uh, color of the body is bluish or brownish and gray on the dorsal surface body is covered by the cycloid scales the eyes positioned dorsolaterally and not visible from the outside of the head here the specific feature is 12 to 13 rays are present in the dorsal fin and homocercal caudal fin is seen and here 100 grams of uh, labio meat consist of 16.6 grams of protein 1.4 grams of fats 650 mg of calcium 175 mg of phosphorus and 97 kcal of energy per 100 grams of uh, labio rohita food and coming to the sirenus brigala it is commonly known as the mrigal the basic features are it is a slender fish grown up to 65 cm small head with blunt snout mouth is subterminal towards the ventral position pectoral fins ventral fins and anal fins with orange tinge they are with the orange tinge orange color and silvery body dark gray along its back cycloid scales are present all over the body except the head region dorsal fin consists of 12 to 13 branched fin rays and four good caudal fin is seen here if you observe the uh, nutritious value 19.5 grams of proteins 0.8 grams of fats 350 mg of calcium 270 mg of phosphorus and 98 kcal of energy per 100 grams of mrigal fish food so these are the three indian major carps which are usually grown in the 
inland fisheries like that of the lakes ponds and the water bodies and there are other minor carps usually labio bata labio fimbriatus labio calbasu uh, sirenus reba sirenus cirrosus these are the uh, fishes which are commonly called as a minor carps indian minor carps so here if you observe the images this is the labio bata and this is labio fimbriatus this is labio calbasu here this is a sirenus reba this is sirenus cirrosus these are the uh, indian minor carps and coming to the cat fishes so the term cat due to the presence of uh, barbels at the snout of the head of the fishes so due to the presence of the barbels they are commonly called as the cat fishes the best examples are clearius batrachus and the valago attu see this is the clearius batrachus here we are observing the uh, various number of barbels so this is commonly called as a catfish and if you observe the valago attu so this is commonly called as a fresh water shark this is commonly called as the fresh water shark usually sharks are available in ocean water like the ringodon type as coleodon rhinodon type as okay stegostoma zebra shark so these all are the other sharks which are present in the marine water but it is known only known as fresh water shark fresh water shark here we are observing the barbels this is known as a valago attu so these two examples from the uh, catfishes clearis batrachus and the valago attu and coming to the exotic fishes exotic fishes they are not at all uh, have the origin in the india but they are imported from some other country and successfully grown in the indian waters usually cyprinus scorpio common carp the hypopthalamic this molitrix there is a silver carp tilapia mozambica and the tino farringdon idella grass carp caracias caracias puntius javanicus aspronimus gaurami so these all are the other varieties which have been imported from other countries uh, since some uh, 56 years back so these are the exotic fishes let us see this is the common carp cyprinus carpio this is commonly called as a common carp and it is from the chinese origin so in 1930 it was imported from china and for the first time it introduced into the nilgiri lakes and the characteristic features are head is small protrusible mouth and the small barbels are there and body is oblong moderately compressed and scales are in golden tinge golden color fins are in pink color so at the maximum it grows up to 75 cm in length and weighs of about 6.5 kg 6 and 1/2 kg weight and the specialty is it breeds thrice in a year three times it breeds in a year three times it breeds and it can be uh, cultured as monoculture or polyculture singly the common carp can be cultured individually or it may be mixed with some other uh, carps like the tino farringdon idella hypopthalamic this molitrix it may be uh, at the combination that will be polyculture in a composite fish farm then coming to the second one it is a hypopthalamic this molitrix commonly called as a silver carp it is imported from hong kong it is imported from hong kong and it is into the katak region water of the katak region it has pointed head dorsally located mouth at the tip of the snout body is oblong slightly compressed and body covered by the small scales eyes are very small 
and it can be grown up to 60 centimeters length and one and a half kg weight. It also cultured as monoculture and as well as the polyculture. This is all about the hypophthalamic this molytrix commonly called as the silver carp imported from the Hong Kong. And coming to the tilapia mozambica. Tilapia mozambica. So it is imported from East Africa in 1952. It is round with the upper concave profile. Body is very short, deep, laterally compressed and the body is covered with the small scales and uh, pectoral anal fins are very large and it grows up to the maximum length of 40 centimeters and the specialized feature is breeds 8 times in a year breeds 8 times in a year another more specific feature is it breeds even at the age of 2 months it can breed at the age of 2 months it starts breeding at the age of 2 months and breeds 8 times in a year this is the specialty of the tilapia mozambica and coming to the tino faringodon idella this is the grass carp and this is the caracius caracius puntius javanicus and aspronemus gaurami aspronemus gaurami this is a giant gaurami and coming to the morels which have the high nutrition value without cholesterol and we have the high market value in Indian fishes. Chana punctatus, Chana striatus and Chana maruleus. See this is the Chana punctatus. This is the image of Chana punctatus. The characteristic features are it is commonly called as the snake head fish or Ophiocephalus. Ophio means snake, cephalus means head. Ophiocephalus. Body is cylindrical with compressed head. Average length is only 30 to 35 centimeters. Color is greenish brown at the dorsal surface and yellow on the ventral surface. And these are the air breathing fish lives mostly in the stagnant water rather than the flowing waters. It lives in stagnant water. And the specific feature is prolific breeders. That is, they release large number of eggs at a time and these are also extensively used in the research work and the nutritious value if you observe 100 grams of uh, morels meat that have 19.5 grams of protein, 0.5 grams of fat, 525 mg of calcium, 610 mg of phosphorus and 100 kilocalories of energy along with vitamins. That is per 100 grams of morels meat. Then coming to the Chana striatus. This commonly called as a striped snake head. So here on the brownish or green color we are observing the yellow stripes. We are observing the yellow stripes. So that is known as a striped snake head fish. The body is colored dark brown with yellow bands on either sides and grows to a length of 90 centimeters or 0.9 meters and here you can observe there is no cholesterol at all in the chana striatus usually the fishes have the high protein content less lipid content although if there is any amount of lipid that may be useful lipid okay otherwise the omega-3 fatty acid kind of lipid then this is the Chana maruleus. Chana maruleus has the spots on the body. Small, small uh, dark spots are there. So this is known as a large headed snake fish. It is used for the culture in freshwater ponds and grows to the length of 1 meter. 45 centimeters to 1 meter. These are the highly, uh, these have the highly nutritious value and high demand in the Indian market. These are the maril fishes. And coming to the main topic that is the fish culture and rearing methods. Fish culture and rearing methods. So here apart from the fish culture whenever we are going for the uh, fish culture we have to take certain precautions while selecting the soil for the construction of the pond and where we have to 
construct the pond and what are the resources water resources we have to check okay first see the nature of the soil the first side in is the nature of the soil see here soil must hold the water and it do not allow the seepage of water the first point the selected land should not allow the water to seepage and it must hold the water usually clay and block cotton soils are suitable for the fish culture and at any cost we should not select the land like rocky soils sandy soils gravelly soils are not at all suitable we should not go for the uh, rocky sandy and gravelly soils go for the clay and block cotton soils for the fish culture construction of the aquatic pond and where actually you are selecting the land that should contain iron lime and the magnesium in an appropriate amounts if at all there are no uh, iron lime and the magnesium then they should be added artificially and the soil ph should be in between 6.5 to 7.9 that is light acidic to high alkaline 6.5 to 7.9 and the nitrogen percentage should be 25 to 50 parts per million ppm means parts per million 25 to 50 ppm and carbon nitrogen ratio is 10 is to 15 10 is to 15 and the calcium ratio should be calcium percentage should be 100 to 200 parts per million and go for the water supply because the fishes are the aquatic organisms whenever we construct the pond there should be the availability of the more pure and hygienic water fresh and the pure water should be available adequate amount of the water should be available for the aquaculture otherwise the fish culture so that we should take care of the while we are constructing the pond there should be the natural resources of the water to fill up the tank otherwise the pond pond must be constructed where actually there is a sufficient pure and clean water is available we have to construct near to the water resources where actually pure water and clean water is available okay so the nature of water depends upon nature of water depends upon the species of fish which we are selecting for the culture and quantity of water depends upon the number of fish we are introduced stocked into the pond which are going to be cultured and water should be of good quality without any kind of pollutants poisons and the chemicals if at all there are pollutants poisons and chemicals that may lead to the diverse effects on the growth of the uh, fishes and they may cause certain diseases and there will be retardation of the growth okay such kind of things may be uh, possible and the water ph so previously we discussed the ph of soil so 6.5 to 7.9 but here it is the water ph is 7.5 to 8.5 7.5 to 8.5 that is entire alkaline then dissolved oxygen in the water it is 5 to 7 parts per million if at all the oxygen concentration is less then we will supply oxygen with the aerators and the phosphates 0.2 to 0.4 parts per million nitrates 0.06 to 0.1 parts per million and the depth of the water column that should be maintained in the pond always 4 to 6 feet okay that much height column should be maintained so these are the requirements of water for the fish pond and the fish culture we introduce the fish in the form of young fry 4 cm long approximately they are collected either from the hatcheries or from the natural resources and they transfer to the tanks or ponds after growth for one or two years that will be ready for the marketing we will capture them and sell them in the open market so this is the uh, overall idea of the fish culture and for the successful farming artificially in a commercial way four tanks are needed four tanks are necessary for the fish culture namely 
they are the hatchery tank nursery pond rearing pond and the stocking pond these four ponds are highly essential and uh, must for the culturing of the fish these are fish ponds four types of fish ponds are fish tanks then coming to the hatchery tank or hatchery unit so these are the hatchery tanks of the uh, fish culture where the tank should possess the measurements are if you take one tank like one hatchery unit it should be a shallow tank contain 10 feet length and 5 feet width and 2 feet height 10 feet length 5 feet width and 2 feet height or depth okay and in order to uh, get more profit and in order to get more yield on the overall production then we will select an appropriate fish for the breeding that plays an important and vital role in the profit and the overall production and always try to raise the fish breeds that are suitable for our area so what is the kind of soil what are the kind of water resources then we have to go for the selection and growth of the particular fish and brood fishes are used for the seed production and these broods are brooders are collected from the natural waters these are kept in the hapa and they are used for the artificial breeding that is nothing but the induced breeding and hypophysization already we discussed and some of the times instead of these rectangular tanks some of them they use the uh, chinese circular hatchery or jar hatchery for the fish breeding the fish pans consisting the eggs and hatched larvae are collected from the puddles of the rivers and transferred into the hatchery the period of hatching is one day of about 24 hours 24 hours is required for the hatching then they will transfer to the another tank that is known as the nursery tank subsequent tank is the nursery tank or nursery pond see the management of nursery pond rearing pond and the stocking pond this is the nursery pond so nursery pond is used to grow on the span or fry to the advanced fry or fingerling stage usually so the primitive stages are grown in the nursery pond the main uh, measurement of the nursery pond should be 50 feet length 30 feet width and 5 feet height and pond is cleaned well and filled with the clean water and nutrients are being added for the growth of natural growth of plankton so on which actually the feed a uh, fish feeds upon and the if you select f- the high quality and good quality of fish seed that maximizes the overall production and the yield of the fish and in order to protect them protect the small uh, fry we will provide shade or temporary roof on the surface of the on the uh, over the nursery ponds and that should be protect from the excess light excess rain and for the from the predatory birds so we have to cover the nursery pond with the shade or temporary roof that protects the fries other is a growing pre larval or post larval stages of the fish and high quality of the pond environment that ensures the high quality production and high profits this is the rearing pond where we are rearing the small fishes okay the pond measurement should be 50 feet length 50 feet width and the uh, 6 feet height fish seed transferred from nursery pond to the rearing pond this is a subsequent pond here we are growing the fish from spawn stage to the fry this is the advanced post larval stage before reaching the adult or it may be to the fingerling stage so that is in the length of our index finger of about 4 to 5 cm long and for this we require 2 to 3 months so 2 to 3 months of time they have to spend in the rearing pond 
then finally the stocking pond where we stock the fish and we grow until they attain the market size so these are the largest ponds because if they are largest because we are uh, usually stock more and more uh, amount of number of uh, fishes at a time fishes are stocked until they attain market size so some of the times we may choose only one species to grow to culture that is a monoculture mono means single single type of fishes has been cultured if you go for all the three kinds of indian major carps like the katla katla labio rohita and the sirenus brigala then that is known as a polyculture otherwise all the exotic carps like the uh, cyprinus carpio hypopthalamic this molitrix and tinopharyngida nidella so like that so we can go for monoculture or polyculture for the growing appropriate market size growing up to appropriate market size it requires of about 8 to 12 months up to one year we have to grow them and whenever they attain market size we have to sell them then what is the care to be taken what are the management techniques to uh, get more yield more profit so we go for the pre stocking menin stocking is the introduction of fish into the pond generally pre stocking means what are the steps to be taken what are the uh, measures to be taken prior to the stocking before the stocking pre stocking means before stocking what we have to do is the pre stocking management then stocking based upon the uh, kind of species you want to grow and number of uh, fingerlings you have to introduce so that is the stocking post stocking after the introducing of fish what are the measures to be taken to the for their appropriate growth okay and for appropriate yield these are the care and management see the pre stocking is very 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 important in the fish culture why because here you see for the first time when you want to go for the fish culture first after the construction of the pond just fertilize the pond by adding appropriate fertilizer like the raw cattle dung and dry the pond plough the pond and eradication of weed plants we remove the weed plants and weed fishes from the pond and go for the liming of pond by adding calcium oxide calcium oxide calcium hydroxide and the enough amount of water will be stored and maintained well clean uh, for its purity and clean and then go for the good environment you provide good environment then the uh, provide high quality feeding through the supplementary feeders feeding then good care to be taken of fish then you will get more yield and the ph level the water 7 to 8 ph to be maintained and we have to thoroughly check frequently and prevent the entry of the predators which will eat the fish then we have to prevent them we should restrict the entry of the predators into the fish pond then take necessary steps against the diseases so time to time the fishes may fall under various diseases so that we should take care to not to undergo the disease if at all they undergo disease we have to provide appropriate medical care to the fishes these are the pre stocking management techniques and coming to the stocking management then if we want to go for the monoculture introduce the uh, desirable fish otherwise you can also go for the combination composite culture and select the species according to the uh, requirement and the ratio it is also an important uh, it plays a, it, it plays a important role according to the size of the pond we have to select the species and the ratio and the number of fish to be stocked and post stocking management here we go for the always check the water conditions whether the ph is more or less okay oxygen supply is enough or not okay whether there is appropriate fertilization fertilization means here we are adding the fertilizers adding of fertilizers 
enough amount of fertilizer whether they added or not and if at all it is needed go for the supplementary feeding and maintain the optimum water parameters so that is the uh, ph level and the other uh, mineral levels and the oxygen um, uh, level so all to be maintained so these are the post stocking management pre stocking stocking and post stocking management techniques and come to the rearing methods how we will culture them so in the traditional system what we are doing generally in the traditional system it is a uh, old practice traditional so in the rearing methods there are many systems traditional system extensive fish farming semi intensive system intensive system and based upon the uh, type of species we are using monoculture polyculture composite fish culture integrated fish culture lacustrine fisheries and the cage culture see one by one traditional system in the traditional system this is a old one so this was a old practice right then this method uh, there is no use of we may not use the fertilizers supplementary feeding and there is no water exchange from the water body so these risks are not at all there in the old practice like the traditional system fish grow purely on the uh, feeding upon the natural feed they take food from the natural natural resources okay and thereby they grow they attain the market size after that they just introducing and capturing that is the things which are uh, present in the traditional system so we may not go for the water change we may not go for the fertilizing we may not go for the supplementary feeding and if you come to the extensive fish farming it is somewhat uh, enhanced here along with the natural food we are providing the fertilizers so what is the use of the fertilizers they allow otherwise they make enrich the growth of the planktons which are general feed of the fish okay so whenever we add the fertilizers then there will be appropriate growth of the plankton takes place so the fish feed on the plankton so we are enhancing the resource of food by adding the fertilizers is the extensive fish farming along with the natural food so we will select medium to large sized ponds for the extensive fish farming and external inputs are very limited except the fertilizers we may not uh, add furthermore and so low cost and low capital investment and as usually the fish per unit area is also low in the extensive fish farming when compared to the other semi intensive one intensive fish farming methods this is the extensive fish farming coming to the semi intensive system here uh, furthermore care to be taken towards the fish development here there is a increased production rate and supplementary feeding will be given in the form of dry pellets and the feed ratio is 2% of food for kg body weight of the fish 2% of food has been given provided for the kg body weight of fish and the daily water change exchange is 10 to 20% of water okay for example there are 1 lakh liters of water in the tank then what we have to do we have to remove 10000 to 20000 liters of water daily and we have to again refill it then uh, oxygen supply done oxygen supply will be done by adding providing aerators or the sprinklers for example this is a stagnant water body without any uh, waves okay tides then the percentage of oxygen which is consumed by the aquatic organisms will become reduced as and when there is a tidal movements then automatically it receives water from the air the water receives oxygen from the air so in order to facilitate the uh, oxygen then we are providing aerators and the sprinklers so in the extensive method only we have provided only fertilizers to grow the plankton growth but here 
he we are uh, supplied with the feeding supplementary feeding and there is a water change and we also provide aerators or sprinklers in order to enhance the oxygen supply this is the semi intensive system and come to the intensive system it is furthermore so if you know the uh, meaning of intensive care unit of hospitals intensive care to be taken so everything will be there in the icu unit right from the ecg mission otherwise the dialysis and other uh, uh, missions which are save the life ventilators and so on so here intensive system that denotes everything will be provided so it is a uh, costly thing still there will be high stocking density we will stock more and more number of fishes fertilizers will be given balanced diet we should be provided it is cost effective cost production is very high it is cost effective and at the same time yield also very high 10 tons per hectare per year 10000 kg means 10 tons per hectare per year then uh, essential feeds and important ingredients are provided at the rate of 5 to 8 percent per kg body weight in the semi intensive only 2 percent but here 5 to 8 percent of uh, material will be supplied ingredients and the nutrients will be supplied per kg body weight of the fish and the water exchange is also enhanced previously it is 10 to 20 percent but here it is 30 percent of the water to be exchanged released from the tank and refilled into the tank and here we will use more number of aerators for supply adequate amount of oxygen when we compare it to the semi intensive we will use more aerators more number of aerators to be used and thereby we will enhance the productivity rate then coming to the types of cultures whether we are using how many kinds of species if you use only one single species then that is known as the monoculture if we are growing only katla katla that is monoculture of katla otherwise if you use the labio then it is the monoculture of labio otherwise if you use the mirigal so only one out of all these only one to be grown in a pond that is known as the monoculture what is the advantage of the monoculture is it enables the farmer it enables the farmer owner to make the feed that will meet the requirement of the specific fish if you grow more than one types they have different feeding habits they depend upon different kinds of food material so in order to satisfy their needs and necessities it is highly impossible for the uh, farmer so that monoculture it enables the farmer to make the feed that will meet the requirement of specific fish this is the monoculture culturing of a single species only only one this is a uh, culture of monoculture of uh, silver carp hypophthalmic this molytrix and coming to the polyculture or composite fish culture polyculture or composite fish culture in this we will uh, culture different species different species means they are differ uh, in their habitat way of life food habits okay they are known as the uh, different species culturing of different species of fish means in the same pond we will uh, culture them so that they differ in their way of life they differ in their food habits still we are culturing in a single pond okay polyculture uh, began in china and the uh, thousand years ago more than thousand years ago chinese were started the uh, polyculture okay it spreads slowly to southeast asia and again slowly spreads to other countries other parts of the world okay and here although you uh, stock different kinds of fishes but they use efficiently utilize the natural food resources and thereby they yield more higher yields of about 8000 kg per hectare per year 8 tons in the tropical climate regions 
in general the general practice is the combination of common carp cyprinus carpio silver carp hypopthalamic this molitrix and the grass carp tinopharyngida nidella so the three of these species mixed together and grown in a single pond otherwise all our uh, three indian major carps also there will be practice in india that is katla katla and labio rohita and mrigal sirenus mrigala so they have to be grown at a time in a single pond okay also there will be a more yield of about 8 tons per hectare per year but the management of the pond for the fish farmer it is highly difficult it becomes difficult for the farmer to maintain the pond and there should be proper pond fertilization and feeding practices must be followed because they have uh, different they need different kinds of food material different kinds of uh, nutritious requirements you have to meet them for that we should must follow the feeding practices and pond fertilization this is the uh, requirement and uh, advantage of the polyculture so we may use at a time the katla or rohuvish and the brigal fish at a time otherwise we may also go for the common carp silver carp and the grass carp so first three are the these all are the indian origin so these three are the uh, exotic resources from other countries if you observe here they have different food food habits katla katla these are the surface feeders they utilize the food in the form of plankton zooplankton phytoplankton cladocerans okay rotifers they eat upon them okay they are surface feeders and rohu sirenus uh, sorry labia rohita they may feed in the middle region okay and if you go for the mrigal so they feed in the bottom region they feed in the bottom region okay grass carp also tino farangana edella okay that feed upon weeds weed plants in the water that is also at the bottom region of the pond so they utilize the natural resources effectively this is the plus point of the polyculture or composite fish culture coming to the innovative practice that is the integrated fish culture integrated fish culture so here fish culture in combination with fish culture in combination with agriculture poultry piggery duckery or other livestock uh, mechanisms and here it is very cheap and gives high returns it is very cheap technology and gives high returns here the fish waste will be used as a fertilizer fertilizer for the crop fields and waste from the crops and the poultry they will be used as a fish feed if you go for only one if you go for only fish culture or only agriculture or only poultry it is somewhat gives low income it gives low income whereas if you combine them integrate them it gives high income most profitable thing it is a integrated fish culture let us see some examples here we have used paddy agriculture with the fisheries and here poultry with the fisheries so above the there is a poultry farm just below there is a aquatic pond and here duckery and fishery here goats and the fishery here piggery and here we are observing the pond fishery and then come to the lacustrine fisheries lacustrine fisheries the fishes which are grown in lakes lacustrine means lake okay the uh, natural uh, lakes are available in india 0.72 million hectares 0.72 million hectares of natural lakes and man made lakes constructed lakes are of about 65 million hectares 65 million hectares then coming to the uh, example for the lacustrian culture it is a uh, fish lake of the kodai canal fish lake of the 
Kodai Canal. And coming to the last one, that is the cage culture. Cage culture. We are using the cages instead of introducing the fish into the directly to the water. So we keep them in the cage and introduce the cage into the water. Cage culture. What we have to do in the cages? We will prepare cages, introduce them, introduce the fish into the cage and they will be released into the natural flowing waters like the drains and the swamps. Drains and the swamps usually. And these cages are made up of wood or bamboo. Nowadays they are made, making with the plastic. Okay. 2 meters length, 1 meter width and 1 meter height. 2 into 1 into 1 kind of measurement. And cages covered with the nylon cloth which have small holes to the entry of the water. It never allows the hole, may not allow the uh, growing fish to outside. Then by this the fish may be protected from various predators. Those animals which are depend upon the fish for their food, okay, we will protect the fish from them. And here they can utilize, fish can feed upon the food which is present in the waste water in the drains and the swamps. Drains and the swamps. So whenever the waste material has been feed, fed by the fish, that uh, remaining water that will be reutilized by the irrigation process, irrigation purposes and it is very low capital investment and it is very easy to harvest because we are keeping the fish in the cages so simply we can pick out them from the cages easy harvesting phenomena so here there is a, uh, there are cages which were installed in a pond like this and our uh, telangana state of uh, agriculture and fisheries ministry they have launched cage culture on six major reservoirs six major reservoirs so namely first one is the koil sagar reservoir of the mahabub nagar pocharam reservoir of the medak and nijam sagar and sriram sagar reservoirs of the nijamabad kadem reservoir from the adilabad lower maneru dam of the Karim Nagar. So in these six major uh, reservoirs, we are growing them tilapia and the pangasius. These two kinds of fishes are growing in the experimental manner. Okay. So case size here we are using six meters length. Okay. Six to me six uh, uh, four meters width and four meters height 4 meters height okay so like that we are using the uh, cage and we are growing the fishes on six reservoirs here six cages collectively called as one battery six cages if you keep them at a site they are called as one battery one battery consists of six cages out of six two are the nursery cages and four are the grow out cages that is the rearing cages four are the grow out cages in each and every project we kept of about two batteries <coughs> there are six reservoirs which we have selected and we kept two batteries two batteries means 12 cages out of this 12 so each one carries uh, two nursery means totally four nursery cages and eight grow out cages so this is the uh, initiation taken by the Telangana State Agriculture and Fisheries Ministry. Right? This is about the cage culture. So in the cage culture what we will do is yeah, young fishes are taken and it is introduced into the cage and they will be grown to the market size. After uh, 6 to 8 months we will yield 3 to 5 tons of fishes per cage. 5 to 3 to 5 tons of fishes will be yielded from each cage. So it is in the cage culture is in infancy stage in the India now. And it is most alternative method 
to inland and brackish water fish farming instead of going for the inland and brackish water fish farming go for the cage culture it, it will be very profitable then due to the continuous flow of water through the cages there is no accumulation of the debris at all and no ammonia deposition by the fish excreta so that there is no pollution of the water because we kept them in the flowing waters lotic water systems so these are the uh, fishes which are growing in a cage of a flowing water water body so this is all about the entire fish culture and culturing techniques and the management methods this is all about the fish culture thank you thank you one and all